Hey, what's up? It's Swamp. Back for another tutorial. Okay, in this one we're going to do an exponential slide, which is um, actually derived from Greek philosophy. It's from Aristotle's physics. It's called a dichotomy paradox. And what it says is, that which is in locomotion must arrive at the halfway stage before it arrives at its goal. And what that means is, if you have point A and you point B, and you move point A towards point B, going half the distance each time you move, you'll never reach point B. So, using that, we can write a formula to make something ease into something. So, what we're going to do is we're going to have this sphere, we're going to have this uh, ease into a position to follow the rider. So, first what we need to do is we need to get that position for the rider. So, we're going to grab a dummy object here, snap it to the drive line, copy it, bring it up, and we're going to glue these two together. And we're going to select manual for pivot type, select the pivot, bring it down to the first point. All right, so now we can rotate this and it gives us this point out here that we can have the, the sphere follow. So now what we need to do is we need to make this point follow the rider. So first we're going to use object position event. We're going to use an interval trigger to power that. And we're going to use a vector to get the position of the rider. So we're going to use vector object info to get the position of the rider. So what you do with this is you select use select object, you just select the rider, and that gives you his X, Y, and Z positions globally. And so now what you need to do is use those with this object position event. You need to turn off local because it's a global coordinate. X position you set it to here, Y position, and Z position you set those three to that tile. You don't need to modify rotation, and the event target is going to be that dummy object. Now with this impulse trigger, you need to set this to 1 to send an impulse each trigger starting on the first impulse, and then select event filter, send that to the object position event. Now what this is going to do is it's going to set that to the rider's position. Now what we want to do is we want to turn the physics off on this, so we're going to go to advanced physics, and we're going to go down to physics type, and you're going to make this decoration only. And that's just making sure it doesn't hurt the rider when it's stuck to him because it is an object. So, okay, so now we're gonna use, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this position, I'm gonna move these out of the way here. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the position of this dummy object and we're gonna take the position of this ball and we're gonna take the difference between the two and according to the physics, we should divide it by two, but we're gonna divide it a little larger because this is 60 frames a second. So. What we're going to do first is we're going to get the position of these objects. So we need an object info data source. We're going to use three of these for each object, X, Y, and Z positions. So we change this to Y, change this to Z, and we need to make a copy of these two, bring it over, and now we're going to select this sphere as the second object. First object for the original ones, we're going to select is this dummy object here. All right, so now we have the position of the dummy object and we have the position of the sphere. So now what we wanna do is take the difference between the two. So we're gonna grab a two input operator. We're gonna use three of them, one for X, one for Y, and one for Z. Gonna set all three of these to subtract. Now what you wanna do is subtract the, the destination, which is where you wanna be, from the current position, which is here. So select the X, Y, and Z, destination Y, subtracted from current Y. And third, destination Z, subtracted from current Z. Okay, so now what that does is that gives you the difference in X, Y, and Z between those two points. Now what we want to do is we want to take a fraction of that. So we're going to copy these operators and bring them straight up. And I like to open them up and just clear them out, hit square, and that'll clear them out. All right, so now we need to move this over. X, Y, and Z. Okay, now we need to set these to divide. And now what we're going to use to divide by is a variable. Now this variable is going to be, we're going to set it to 10 right now. The larger number, the more easing there is. The, the smaller number, the less easing. So we're going to set it to 10 just to kind of, it's kind of like a nice little medium number. Plus it's easy to see the math in it. Okay, so now 
we're going to divide by that number. So it's going to be the second operand for all three of these. Now the first number, the x position, we want to take this x position, which is the difference between those x's, the y position here, and the z position here. Okay, so now what we've done is we've taken the difference between these two points and we have divided it by 10, each x, y, and z number. Now, we're going to take the, sorry, we just can copy these. Okay, we're going to take these three. And we're going, what we're going to do is we're going to make it be the new position for the dummy object, I mean for the, for the sphere. So we clear these two out. Now we're going to set this to add. All right, now the first one's going to be the x position. So what we want to do is we want to take the current position and we want to add it to the new x position that we formulated here. Same thing with y, current y position, and add it to the new y position. Same thing with z, current z position, which is there, to the new z position, which we calculated here. Okay. So now we need an object position event to tell that object where to go. So we'll grab another object position event, put it here. Once again, we turn off local because this is a global position. We take the X position from here, the Y position from here, and the Z position from here. Okay, then we don't need to modify rotation. The event target is going to be this plasma ball. Okay, so now we need to power it. So we're going to come from this object position event that's taking the router position and we're going to select event filter and we're going to go to this object position event here. All right. Okay, so now when you hit play, you see that the ball eases in. It doesn't just fly over there and snap to the position. It kind of moves in kind of slowly. And it also follows that position wherever that position goes. So you can see it goes up and down as we go up and down the hills. It slows down. When you slow down, it catches up and stays with you. In theory, it really never reaches that exact position because we're dividing it by 10. But you can't really tell with this. Such a minute amount of space. So, but you see it follows you wherever you go. Wherever that position is, it always wants to be there. So it'll always follow that position. All right, let me show you this real quick. Okay, so if we change this number to a higher number, make it a lot higher. It's going to slow down that easing. You'll see here how it slows it down. So that's how you adjust the speed of the easing. You can make this number smaller and it'll speed up. See how much faster it, it goes to that dummy object. So now what we're going to do, I'm going to show you something else real cool here. All right, so what we can do is we can take a dummy object here and you can make this dummy object follow that dummy object but this dummy object hover and, and move up and down so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this I'm gonna grab an object position event for this new dummy object and now we need to get the position of the old dummy object so we're gonna use vector object info again So this object is going to be this dummy object here. Okay, so now what we need to do is adjust the Y position. So we're going to need to get that. So we need to get vector. We'll grab a get vector. And this one will be index 1, which will be the Y position. And you see here, X, Y, and Z, Y is 132.74. And this has 132.74. So that's grabbing the Y position. That's what we want. Okay, so now we want a curved vector, I mean curved data source, just a regular curved data source. And we also want a two input operator. And so what we're going to do with this two input operator is we're going to add the position, the Y position, with the curved data source. Now we're going to set the curved data source to be ease in out. I'm going to make this two, zero to two, and we'll make this around 200. All right, so now we want to set this to loop and invert second half. And now for this object position event, we're going to make it global once again. X position is going to be the vector. Y position is going to be the two input operator. And Z position is going to be the vector once again. The 
We're not going to modify rotation, and the event target is going to be this new dummy object. Now we need to power this, so we're going to use the same event filter coming from this old object position event there to this object position event here. Now you'll see the dummy object following that other dummy object and going up and down on the Y axis. So what we need to do now is we want to make the ball follow that dummy object. So we're going to take this, these three coordinates, sorry, these three coordinates that we originally used to mark the dummy object, we're going to remark it as this dummy object here. Now you can see the sphere goes up and down and follows along with us on the Z and the X axis. So let me show you what it looks like. So the sphere follows us along and it still tracks that dummy object for its position in the world but it adds to the Y position making it you know bob up and down. Now let's try something else. Let me show you this. One more thing we can do. We can adjust the rotation of that ball and make it spin around in circles. So let's grab this curved data source here and bring it up to where we're adjusting the position of the ball. Now this we're going to set to linear. I'm going to set this to 360 or 359. Some, I don't know if it's doing 359 or 360. I don't know if it makes a difference really. Um, let's make it go about 100 in its length of time it takes to spin all the way around. And we want to turn off invert second half. Okay, so now we go to this object position event that's adjusting the position of the ball and we'll click yaw and add it add that uh, curved data source to the yaw position and that will make the sphere rotate, circle, go up and down and follow our position. So you see that we've got it now following us. It's hovering and it's rotating. So it will follow you anywhere you go with this. Once again, it'll go anywhere you go with that or anywhere that dummy object goes. Backwards, forwards, up, down, wherever it goes. With a curved data, with a curved drive line, you're gonna need to adjust the angle of that object because it's gonna it's gonna not turn. So you're gonna need to turn it with the angle of the rider. I could show you that later in a in a later tutorial. But for now, this is how you do this. Thanks for watching and have a good time.